Hi there, welcome to Board Gems. This is my video series in which I take an older forgotten gem and highlight it. Uh, sometimes it's an older game that people have moved on from. Um, sometimes it's not that old, but just didn't make a big splash when it came out. But for whatever reason, people aren't talking about it anymore. Um, and you know what? These games are still good and we shouldn't forget about them. Um, I'm keeping the volume a little bit low. I'm not my usual excited self today because this is actually in the morning, early morning, and I'm, I'm doing a quiet video today uh, while people are still sleeping. Um, so this video is also for a request, a requested game. Um, I have a, a person who has donated an amazing amount of geek gold to me on Board Game Geek um, to encourage me to do these videos. So I approached them and I said, do you have a request? <laughs> They thought about it and they said, could you do a video about Colorado? So this is me doing a video of Colorado. Now, this is a card game. It was designed by uh, Michel Schacht or Michael Schacht. Um, I apologize. I do my best with the German pronunciations. Um, it was published by Abacus. And this is a real um, evergreen card game. Now, that designer and publisher combination have done quite a few games actually, including uh, China and Hansa and Paris Paris and a number of other games. They work very often together. And uh, this is one of their, yeah, one of their evergreen card games. It's for uh, three to five players, ages eight and up, I think. Yep. And takes about 30 minutes to play. Um, one game, I would say, probably takes less than 30 minutes, maybe, yeah, 20 or 30 minutes. Um, a full match would be four games. I don't know anybody who plays it that way. We just play the one game, treat it as a, just a short little card game. Um, and it works great for that purpose. Uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different with this video. Um, I have another game that's very similar to Colorado, which I will cover in a second video uh, that's paired with this one. So if you watch this video, I recommend you check out that video as well. And that's for a game called Zuloretto Mini, otherwise known as Zuloretto Junior. Now, Colorado, like I said, is an evergreen card game. And um, in, I want to say 2008, um, Abacus and Michael Schacht published a big box version of the game, basically. Uh, a rethemed version with a little, just a little tiny bit more complicated. Instead of making it a little card game, making it a kind of a big family strategy board game in the vein of a Carcassonne or a Ticket to Ride style game. And they made it, and it was called Zuloretto. And Zuloretto won the Spiel des Jahres that year, Game of the Year in Germany. And so there's been lots of expansions and spin offs. And one of the lesser known spin offs is Zuloretto Mini, which is also known as Zuloretto Junior. And this is a hidden gem. And I'm gonna highlight this in a second different video. But this video is about Colorado. I'm gonna quickly show you how Colorado plays. It's a very simple card game. And then after that, we'll talk about why it's a board gem. To set up the game, remove the cards that have this kind of tan back. Some of these are little summary cards, so we'll give one of these to each player. These mark rows of cards, and you're going to add one to the table for every player. So for example, in a four-player game, you could add four. Something like this. And you just won't use the other ones. In a four or five-player game, you're going to use the entire deck. In a three-player game, you'll remove one color, all the cards of a color. I usually remove gray because what even is gray? What kind of color does gray, does gray claim to be? So you can remove all of uh, all the cards of one color. So there's seven different colors. There's also wilds. So these can be any color you want. And there's also plus twos. They just give you a straight up two points. You're gonna shuffle up this deck of cards then you're going to deal out 15 of them. This is the last round marker. When this card is drawn, that's going to trigger the end of the game. You're going to put that on top 
and the rest of the cards on top like that. So the game is going to take place over a number of rounds. And during a round, if that last round card is drawn, you're going to finish that round, but then that's going to be the end of the game. Then you're going to total up your points. You're going to be collecting these cards, these colors. Wow, all those put together. You're going to be collecting colors of cards. And at the end of the game, you are going to gain or lose points based on how many of each color you were able to collect. For the three colors that you gained the most cards in, so the three cards that you've collected the most of, you are going to score a number of points, positive points, good points, victory points, based on the number of cards you've collected. So if, for example, your, your best color is pink and you collected five pink cards, you're going to score 15 points for pink. You'll notice it tops out at six. You can add more, but you, you'll never score more than 21 points for any particular color. So you're going to score points for your three best colors. But any other colors that you draw, you're going to lose that many points. So for example, if the fourth most common color in your collection is yellow and you have three yellow, you're going to lose six points. And you're just going to add two points for every one of these cards you collect. On a player's turn, and play is clockwise, they can do two options. They can either add a card to one of the rows or they can take a row. By the end of the round, the round will end when this happens, every player will have collected one row. There's one row for every player. Each row can have between one and three cards in it. You can't take a row if it's empty. So at the beginning, that first player, they have no choice but to draw a card. So they're going to draw a card and they can choose any of the rows to add it to. And then it's the next player's turn in clockwise order. Now they have a choice to make. They can draw a card and add it to a row. They can add it to the same row or a different row. It's up to them, but no row can have more than three. Or they can take a row that's still available. The only row they could take is this one. You can't take a row that's empty. You have to take a row. If you take a row, it has to have at least one card in it. Now when you take a row, you simply take all the cards, including this one, and just remove them from the middle of the table. And you're going to take those cards and you're going to put them face up in front of you like this. If you collect multiples of the same color, just stack them like so. And keep this card in front of you to show that you've already claimed a row this round. You only get to claim one. So once you take a row, you're out. You're not playing the round anymore. But the other players continue to play. In fact, the last player, if there's just one card, if they want to, they can just keep drawing cards, keep adding cards to the row until they decide to take it. But once they add a third card, they would have no choice. The next turn, they would have to take it. And that's all that happens in a round. To start the next round, so all these cards are taken, all the players are going to return these. Players keep the cards that they've collected and you're going to continue. And the player to take the first turn in the next round is the player who took the row last in the previous round. And again, as you're drawing cards, if you manage to reveal this card, just set it aside and draw another one, and you're going to continue the round. There's enough cards underneath um, that you can finish the round, but then the game will be over. And then each player is going to use their summary card and total up all the points for each of their colors that they've collected. Again, for three colors, they can score positive points. Any other colors, they score negatives. The last rule is there's also some wild cards. When you collect a wild card, you just put it to the side for now, almost treat it like its own color for, the, for the, the rest of the game. When the game is over, you can then take any wild cards you've collected it and choose which column to add it to. So if I've only collected three brown, but I want to score more points for brown, I can add a wild to that. Now it's considered to be four brown, and I would score 10 points instead of six. So you're gonna score positive points for three colors, and for the rest of the colors you've collected, you're gonna score negative. And don't forget to add the plus twos for any that you've collected of those. And whoever has the most points 
at the end of the game wins. That's it. You're ready to play Colorado. Colorado probably wouldn't have been my first choice uh, to cover as a board gem, in part because it's pretty well known. I usually like to cover games that are a little bit more forgotten, a little bit more the hidden gem type. Um, but his ratings are under seven, so it's certainly not universally loved uh, by the hobby. But it is an, an older game that is uh, still enjoyed and appreciated today, and for good reason. Um, I happen to be a fan of this designer. He, there's a, a subset of gamers like this, uh, Michael Schacht and Leo Colovini, and you could argue Reiner Knizia, Corne Van Morsel, who are designers that usually don't like to add tons of extra stuff to their games. They like to kind of boil it down to the essence of what makes the game fun and do as, just make a game as simple as possible that has that part to it, uh, which I personally appreciate. But I think a lot of hobbyists don't. Uh, they want a, a more a bigger game, more more options, more things to think about. Um, so I mean, you probably know whether you like fillers. You like short little card games that take twenty to thirty minutes to play. And in your experience, if you haven't liked those types of games, you probably won't like Colorado either. One thing I like is that unless there's a start player in a round, every time your turn comes around, you have an interesting decision to make. And I wouldn't say that decision is obvious. If there's a row that looks good to you, but it's not full, you need to decide whether to take that row and say, that's good enough for me, or if you want to wait to see if something even better is added. Um, you may want to see if other, other players, if there are rows set up on the table that uh, the players later than you in turn order are going to want, and then you have an opportunity to, to poison the well. So these are interesting decisions to make. And so I still enjoy Colorado. Now, I don't play it a lot. Uh, I've played it, I would guess, maybe 10 times over the last 15 years. It probably doesn't sound like a lot, but I've enjoyed every game I've played. Um, there's really nothing, I think, that, that is bad about the game. Now, when you compare Colorado with something like uh, Zuloretto or Zuloretto Mini, I suggest you watch the second video in, in this uh the companion video, this is a one of a pair of videos I've done. The other one is on Zuloretto Mini. If you compare Colorado with Zuloretto Mini, Colorado's scoring is a little bit more painful. Does that make sense? So in, in Colorado, the more you get of a particular color, the more points you get, right? So every card you get is increases your score by more than the last one. But also, for one thing, there's an upper limit. You can get more, but you don't get any more points for it. Uh, in that sense, it's actually a little bit more forgiving than Zuloretto Mini, because in Zuloretto Mini, you have an actual maximum. You need to get to six, uh, preferably, but you definitely don't want more than six. In Colorado, you can get more than six, you just don't score anything for it. So that's an interesting thing, that Zuloretto Mini is actually a little bit more painful that way. But in Colorado, um, you're the you're getting points for you know three colors, three suits, and that scales. So the more cards you get, the more and more points you get. But for the everything else, it's negative, and you're going to lose that many points. And the more cards you get of a particular color, the more points you lose. Um, so in that sense, Colorado is more painful. I'd probably argue Colorado is a better game for hobbyists. Um, that that kind of painful pain, uh, scoring. It's actually a good thing. You kind of want to, you know, you want a game where you can kind of twist the knife a little bit. And you can do that in Colorado, especially, you know, if you're poisoning the well, as I said, you're you're adding a card to a row that you know what other player wants, and you're adding a card that you know they wouldn't want. And that's just fun. Uh, so Colorado is still a great game today. It's an evergreen. It's not a hidden gem at all. It still should be easy to find everywhere. And for most people, I'd probably say that's the version to get. I just find Zuloretto, its big box cousin, to be, in the end, kind of forgettable. It did win Game of the Year, and that's great, and I would say it's deserving. But for some reason, part of that game just left me feeling a little bit flat. So actually, I kind of enjoy the purity and the simplicity 
of just regular Colorado. Um, and of course, it takes up so little space, right? Just a little card game, right? You can always find room on your shelf for a card game. So I would still argue that Colorado is the best version you uh, can probably get. But uh, like I said in the companion video, I did want to mention Zuloretto Mini because that is definitely a hidden gem. That is a bit of an obscure game. Not a lot of people know about that. Um, so I definitely wanted to highlight that. So I ask you, please, if you're watching this video, uh, make a note to check out the other video about Zuloretto Mini. And so you were able to compare the two. But to summarize, I would say that for most hobbyists, I would just stick with Coloretto. I think Coloretto is a completely fine game and it still has those interesting decisions. It's a great filler for gamers and you know, people who aren't in the hobby can definitely enjoy it as well. In a family setting, I prefer Zuloretto Mini and that's the version I had for a long time. Um, but Coloretto is the one that I'd probably recommend to most people. Um, if you have kids and you also think that you'd enjoy the zoo theme a little bit more, um, I think Zuloretto Mini is better than its big brother, Zuloretto. But I think for a lot of people, Coloretto is the way to go. This section is my rating rebuttal. Now what I've done is I have an iPad here and I've brought up all the comments from people, users on Board Game Geek, who have rated the game four out of 10. And I'm gonna read some of them out loud and offer my thoughts. I have not read these in advance and I'm not going to attribute them. It's not a personal thing, I'm not calling anybody out. I just want to bring up some counterpoints to my review where I talked about why I think it's a gem here are some people who definitely don't think it's a gem. So I'm going to uh, read some of these out as counterpoints and uh, offer my thoughts. A very simple set collection and drafting game with a hint of press your luck in the scoring. Way too light for me. There is barely anything there. Um, I would guess this user doesn't really like light card games. Actually, I feel like Colorado almost has a little more meat than a lot of the card game fillers. I mean, there's more to it than uh, than Six Nymphs or No Thanks, which are a couple of games that often get compared to it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a no-brainer game. It, you, you can think a little bit on it, so I disagree with that. Very thematically boring, just the exact same picture on every card. No creativity whatsoever. Also, at least the color should have been made to be very distinct and specific. Instead, many of them have very similar hue. So the designer needs to get spanked. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not colorblind. Uh, I personally find the colors stand out quite a bit because even the, you're abs this user is absolutely right. It's just the same chameleon uh, low, um, image on every card, but what's different is the color. But it's not just the color, there's, there's also, at least in this version, maybe he has a, this user has a different version, but um, they also have different textures, at least like visibly, right? So the gray one has a different texture than the orange one. Nice filler, but has virtually zero strategy. Um, yeah, it's not a strategic game, but I would say it still has some tactics to it, so some things to think about. Fine game where every time it's your turn, you need to make a real decision. However, the high randomness factor lowers the score. Um, well, it means a card game is going to have some randomness, but this user points out like this actually has real and interesting decisions to make um, every time your turn comes around. Simple color choosing game. Zuloretto replaced it for me, even though Zuloretto itself is utterly replaceable. I, I agree with Zuloretto being replaceable. I, I used to have the game, don't have it anymore, don't miss it at all. Nothing quite replaces Coloretto, except maybe Zuloretto Mini, because they're very similar games. I played once with someone who intentionally set up their spouse to win. Didn't like the game much anyways, but just how easy it is to king make in this game basically permanently ruined the game for me. Okay, yeah, that's based on a personal experience and that's impossible to discount. Yeah, you, if two people are playing on the same team, <laughs> it's not a team game, everybody's supposed to be competitive and playing against each other, but if one person wants their spouse to win and they add a good card to a, a set that they were already planning to take anyway, um, yeah, that, I could see that would break down, but a lot of games can do that, right? There's Players aren't hiding any information from each other, um, so I can easily see what you need, 
and uh, any game that has that has that uh, risk. I thought Colorado was fun the first dozen times I played, but the game really has limited strategic choices, so I found the game has become very repetitive. Yeah, but I think it's interesting that it was fun the first dozen times it was played. Uh, that's a good rate. If it's fun the first 12 times you play and then starts getting boring, and the game itself is, what, you know, $10, $15? Uh, you think you get your money's worth? I, I, you could definitely play it out, though. You could definitely play it too much and then get tired of it. Ah, now this is interesting because this is, this is a person who uh, updated their rating, and their first comment was very positive. Played 20 times, best filler ever. 20-minute game with interesting decisions can be taught in 45 seconds and anyone can play. The artwork looks great, too. A variation on the whole I cut the pie, you choose the slice mechanism. Wonderful game, a must-buy. Perfect for families and non-gamers, but lots of fun for gamers, too. Update. My enthusiasm for this game quickly waned. After 20 plays, though, wow. Doesn't work all that well with three players, and the game can be quite lucky with the plus two cards. As a light game, it's good, but I prefer to get the gorgeous and more board gamey Zularetto. Hmm. Doesn't play that well with three players. Um... Yeah, I mean, I guess so. It's, it's probably better with more. Four is probably the sweet spot, I would say. I don't find the plus two cards to be particularly lucky. Um, I would say the value of them is pretty low compared to, like, if you have five of a color and you're getting a sixth, the amount of points you get for that is much better than two. So the plus two cards I don't find particularly swingy. So maybe I should try it again. Most decisions seemed very obvious the one time I played. Played this again recently, and my comments stand. There is no tension in this game at all. And this time I won. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be curious to see how many players uh, this, this person played it with. No tension in the game. Um, you know, there's a little bit of a potential push-your-luck aspect to it, right? Where maybe you're the last player in the round, and there's one uh, row that's left to be taken, and you want to add cards to it, but you want them to be the cards you want, not other cards. You could just take it and just get, like, one card, but it must be tempting to add more cards to it and hope you get something good. So, um, I guess it's a little bit of tension. Pretty boring stuff, and the downtime whenever someone draws a card and is looking through everyone's cards is way too long. Probably pleasant for kids or families bereft of excitement. Oof. Brutal. Um... I mean, I, I think that's that's group dependent. Um, certainly, when my group plays Colorado, absolutely, we're looking at everybody's cards. I can see, okay, when you know the person two turns from now is going to want these two cards, but they don't want this one I just drew. So they're probably going to get this row. But if I add this, it kind of poisons the well a little bit. Um, I guess if that process takes too long. I could see that being frustrating for people who just like, come on, let's go! Um, with my group, it never took that long. It just kind of scan, right? The colors are bright. They stand out. You can easily see what colors people care about. And um, so it, it usually doesn't take that long. A very quick filter for two. Fairly random, but plenty of interesting decisions to make in most games. The problem is, after a while, the pure fillerness comes through in that it is a mechanism, not a game. So two parts of that. A very quick filler for two. It would be a very short game, very quick game. But I think officially Colorado doesn't support two players. Maybe there's a variant that uh, I'm not familiar with that plays with two. There's a lot of those older games that play three to five players, and they don't support two players out of the box, but people came up with a variant, or the designer came up with one later. But I wouldn't call this you know, a filler for two. You want to play this with more if possible. I, but I do want to comment on this. It is a mechanism, not a game. Whew. That deserves a comment. Um, there is definitely a subset of gamers out there who don't like games that are streamlined to the point where it's just this one pure mechanism and you're just playing that, right? I remember when Dominion came out and of course, Dominion was very popular, but then there were there were a bunch of um, people who were coming out with uh, 
variations of Dominion, you know, kind of with a stronger theme or with more going on, or deck building was a part of a bigger game. And there was one person, I'm not going to credit it, but they're, they were, they're pretty well known in the hobby. And I remember them saying, Dominion is a great game, but let's face it, I'm paraphrasing, it's a mechanism in search of a game. And sometimes for those really streamlined games, I just feel like that's such an insult to say that. I mean, the mechanism is the game. You can't really just take it out and say, this is a mechanism and just doing this mechanism is not the game. Like they put a game in it, but it's just, it's just boiled down to its purest form, right? Um, it is absolutely a game just because it doesn't have a bunch of extra stuff that you don't really need. And oh, that's the game. This is just a mechanism. Oh, I disagree with that. Good, simple, yet subtle card game. Not really deep, but also neither complex or trivial. Not the best replayability, however, in the long term. That seems to be a thing that I'm, I'm seeing uh, again and again in these comments, where people, you know, played it 12 times or 20 times and went, this is a great game. But then it's like, well, after 30 times, oh, it really starts to wear off. Yeah. <laughs> I would argue it did its job if you were able to play it that many times. Um, I've probably played it at least 10 times, maybe 15, but spread out over a very long period of time. So I've never gotten tired of it, right? But I can imagine you playing over and over again many times in a row. It would be quite tiring. Zuloretto is more satisfying. Skip this one and just play its big brother if you really like the mechanic. Yeah, that's, again, an opinion. Um, I find Zuloretto unsatisfying, um, mostly because of the money actions. Um, but theme-wise, I think Zuloretto is, is strong. But when this person says, skip this one and just play its big brother, you wouldn't play them in the same situation, right? Zuloretto takes mm, at least 50% more time than Colorado. So, and it obviously takes up a lot more space. So I, I wouldn't argue, in any case you could play Colorado, you could play Zuloretto. Although I would say, in almost all cases, you could play Colorado, you could play Zuloretto Mini. So there you go, some thoughts on uh, Colorado, why some people really don't like it. Um, the general theme I, I get is that a lot of people liked the game at first, but got tired of it, perhaps by playing it a lot. I think possibly any game which is boiled down to its smallest, purest form um, is susceptible to that, that you can overplay it. And then you've basically seen everything there is in the game after 10 plays or 15 plays or 20 plays. I would say it's still a good game uh, at, the, uh, at the early part of that. Every time your turn comes around, it's interesting choices. Um, it's obviously a small game, doesn't take that long. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to give it a try, I would suggest playing with at least four players, four or five, and um, we don't overplay it. Play one or two games, see how you feel, and if you like it, yeah, it's going to be in your game bag, you're going to be carrying it around all over the place and introducing to people, but maybe don't overplay it. Um, but for variety, um, you obviously if you like the game and you want more, Zuloretto and its spinoffs are, are an option too. But Colorado is still a great game today, and is my board gem of the week, along with Sudoretto Mini. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Remember, older games like Colorado don't stop being good just because new games come out. Take care.